When you looked at the title of this video, and then decided, you know what, yes, this is a good way to spend my time is to watch this. I imagine there was one question going through your mind above all others, and that was, why? Why would someone do this to themselves? And quite honestly, I don't know the answer. I just looked at this and said, yeah, this seems like a good idea to do. And let me tell you, I'm going to go into great detail to explain just how wrong of a decision that was. The ground rules here are very simple. We can only use infantry units in combat. This means any unit that is not riding a mount. That means all of the Cavaliers, Forest Knights, Draco Rider, or Pegasus Knights are out of the question. However, this also means we're able to use units that would eventually get those mounts, like Azel or Lachis, as long as we don't promote them into using them. Secondly, we only can't use them in combat. We can still use Sigur to capture points, because if we couldn't, we would be fucked. Or we can use mounted units to initiate talk conversations, like Lex getting his Brave Axe. One last thing I want to mention is that I am using an SNES emulator with a speed up enabled. If I didn't, we would be here for 30 goddamn years just trying to complete the first generation. So if you ever see the entire universe move as though it was a capped Lewin wielding Forsetti, that is why. And with all that out of the way, let's just get our first turn started. Our tale begins, and at the very beginning, we make sure that everyone is put back into their cage, I mean castle, as Arden is allowed to triumphantly march onto the battlefield to start us all off. As you can see, I come up against my first enemy, attempting to navigate an options menu. I want to turn on autosave and increase the speed of the game exponentially, however, it takes me three tries to get the goddamn options menu correct. If this is how I start this, then one only knows what greatness awaits us further down the line. Once I finally get my shit together and get this game started, I hold tab to fast forward through this boring ass plot about an early game Fire Emblem axe wielding villain wanting some poontang. And then our first battle starts. Arden and the Axemen go hand in hand, Arden's high defense and weapon triangle advantage meaning he's not really in much of any danger. The other Axemen move up, but I feel pretty good about the fact that I won't have any problems killing them. What is a problem are these bandits that are constantly burning villages down, but I've already pretty much accepted them as a foregone loss. After all, in a run like this, you can't do everything as perfectly as you could before. Now, right here, Azel shows up alongside Lex. Now, normally, Lex is the boy that we all want to see. However, in this particular run, we're going to have to make do with Azel. And then we get our first save in, and we have successfully completed the first turn, which is more than I thought I'd be able to accomplish. Azel then proceeds to effortlessly take out the axe wielder trying to destroy that town, due to the fact that resistance in this game is pretty much zero for anyone not a mage. Afterwards, Arden continues his epic clash with the very first axeman that we find, going in for another attack as quickly as our brave young man often does. This time he gets hit by both, which is not very good, but I still don't feel like that's much of a problem. And then I end the turn, the enemy phase begins, and the other Axemen start to move up. I say, as that is clearly a bowman. The other Axemen attacks Arden, and I really hope that he finally dodges one of these hits. And he doesn't. It is now I'm starting to get a little worried, but I still feel like I'll be fine. And then the other Axemen runs right past me and sees his Jungbi, instantly ending the run right there. Yeah, I kind of forgot that that was something that could happen, since almost at no point in the game are your castles ever actually in danger. This now presents us with a problem. Arden can't leave the castle, otherwise the Axemen will just run right past him and instantly end the run. We also can't use Sigurd, Alec, or Noish to defend the castle, because then a cavalry unit would be fighting. So, this means that Arden's grand epic quest to finally break free of the shackles of castle duty begins with him on castle duty. It's not all bad, though. Arden's good enough at Castle Duty for us to live long enough to see Quan, Finn, and Ethelin show up. However, we can't actually put them into the cage town <clears throat> because there's a guy right there blocking the door. So we just put them in this little corner right here and ask them to wait patiently as Arden takes care of business. And take care of things he does, as Arden's superb job at defending the castle means that Azel has plenty of time to make sure that not every single village in the prologue is a smoldering pile of rubble. Because of this, some money can still be gained from those villages, and Arden can acquire it. 
because the game is kind of a douche to us. See, it would have been really easy if we could have just sold Noish's steel sword that's in his inventory and had Arden purchase it to give him some more firepower right off the gate. Unfortunately, when you sell the steel sword, you buy it back for 3,000 gold. Arden's starting inventory is 2,000 gold, and his iron sword sells for only 500, meaning that we're kind of shit out of luck even if we tried it at the very beginning, so we needed some of those villages to stick around. Once Azel and Arden have wreaked enough havoc to the west that they start coming back south to take the castle, I decide that Sigurd has had enough time to think about his actions and free him from his prison and send him towards the castle as well. I move Quan and Ethelin to talk to him because I don't remember if that actually matters, and I'm going to give you a spoiler, it doesn't, and it looks like everything is completely fine. But there's one teeny tiny thing I forgot about until right now. See, as I mentioned earlier, I want Arden to equip the steel sword for Noish's inventory before beginning the next phase of the chapter, because that'll really help his damage output and the increase in weight doesn't matter when nothing has pursuit right now. However, I also want Arden to be exactly where the bridge forms to the west once the second part of the chapter starts, which means I have to trudge Arden all the way back to the base castle, go in there, repair his sword, buy the steel sword, and then trudge him all the way back, make sure he takes a quick visit to go to church and heal, and then be ready for when the second wave starts, all when everything else is dead and I just have nothing else to do. This is both due to my poor planning and the fact that there was really no way around this, so we might as well just deal with it. And with that out of the way, it is time to begin the battle on the big bridge. After Jungby is seized, the other goon with an axe that wants to fuck women decides to spawn a bunch of reinforcements and reopen the bridge that he destroyed. Somehow. And this leads to a big battle which Arden is going to confidently tank. Except there's one problem. See, while Arden is definitely beefy, that is a lot of goons, and Arden doesn't have the defenses to quite entirely stall it. However, we do have one savior, Arvis, and we're going to use him to cheese things in a very effective and also kind of very, very cheap strategy. See, what Arvis wants to do is make a beeline for Sigurd and give him the Silver Sword, which normally is the thing that makes Sigurd even more broken than it already is, but in this case, we're going to be giving that to someone else. Now, this AI can be abused, whereas if Arvis walks in front of anyone that's in his way to Sigurd, he will burn them, and he will burn them bad. So, if we just so happen to put all of these little reinforcements in his way, well, what happens next we can hardly be accountable for, right? And, thanks to an irony that is not lost on me and shouldn't be lost on you, we are able to make it through the prologue using only infantry thanks to some help from good old pal Arvis. Now, the boss goes down very easily, and with that, Sigurd can just walk up and we can seize the second castle, completely finishing this chapter for good. And it only took us, oh Jesus Christ, 79 turns. Oh boy, this is going to be a long one. But, as it were, our boys aren't looking too bad at all. Arden has leveled strength better than defense, but 16 strength going into chapter 1 is really good, and the 14 defense isn't too shabby either. And those two little sprinkles of speed he got are also very much appreciated, and he'll really use them once he gets the pursuit ring. As for Azel, he leveled up strength, which is useless, but hype as hell, and he got good magic and speed, which is honestly all he needs. I don't know how capable he is in combat without his promotion gains, I kinda just remember he gets horse and then my brain goes blank after that, so hopefully he'll still be able to keep up once we start getting later into the first generation. I hope you all enjoyed coming to see how well we could manage the prologue, and I hope you guys continue to come around to see how well we can manage chapter 1. I don't really know how well this is going to go in the long run, I haven't practiced this, I've never done this before, so for all I know we could hit a huge roadblock and everything fucking collapses. Who knows? I don't, and you don't either, hopefully, I don't hope anyone's done this to themselves. Uh, next chapter, we're going to get a lot more infantry, so that should really help us out in the grand scheme of things. And if you like this video, please leave a like and comment, I need to know how this is. I've This is a bit different than my other Let's Plays, as this commentary is with no script after I've already recorded the gameplay. So I'm kind of trying like a hybrid between live action comedy and just my regularly well-rehearsed comedy that I've done for my other character analysis. Is, is, is I. 
In Alsai? Yeah, sure. So if you like this style, please let me know. If you'd rather I make this into a more detailed video, please understand I'd have to take longer to make them, but I could totally come at this with a script if need be. Otherwise, expect these every once in a while, like two a week, three a week is what I'm hoping for. Otherwise, you've got Vestaria for your day-to-day -day fix. I'll see you all in the next one, and I hope you all had a wonderful time.